This is the Power Queen 36 volt battery directly out of my boat. And if you're curious how it works actually out on the water, you're in the right place. So let's go talk about it. Today we're talking about the Power Queen 36 volt or 38.4 volt 50 amp hour battery. This one I've been using for a trolling motor, as you can see right here. And I wanna to talk to you about my experience with it and why you may need a 36 volt battery. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So my experience with it has been fantastic. I've been running it with a Garmin Force trolling motor on 36 volts, uh, able to run at full speed, which is usually something you have to pay attention to with lithiums. It's got a 50 amp hour uh, capacity to it, which means it will discharge, it's rated to discharge at 50 amps. So if your trolling motor pulls over that, it could potentially shut down the battery. So I've had no issues with that on the force and I've got some testing to back that up here in just a minute. We'll get to it, I promise. Now I've had no issues with it. I love the Bluetooth app. So I'm able to pull that up, see the state of charge, see that the cells are balanced, see what the temperature is, all that kind of stuff. And what's nice is if you've got multiple batteries, you can see all of them, you know, connect to each one see everything that's going on in your in your whole boat setup, which is really, really nice. So let's talk through some of the features of the battery. So it's super lightweight and I wanna harp on that because that's this is the way the world's going when it comes to trolling motor batteries. It's going to a single battery or maybe a two of these, uh, one as a basically as a redundant backup. Traditionally, when you wanted to run a 36 volt trolling motor, you had to run three group 31 typically sized batteries in series to get to the 36 volts, three 12 volt batteries. And that took up a ton of real estate. It's also very, very heavy. Those are 50 pounds a piece. So you'd have 150 pounds worth of trolling motor batteries in your boat. This guy weighs 33 pounds. Let me double check that, 33 pounds. It's super lightweight and you're getting the same energy out of this battery as you would the three lead acid batteries because you only get about 50 amp hours out of a group 31 lead acid. So that is really, really nice from a packaging standpoint. And even if you wanted to run two of these, you got this one you can run off of and a full second one is a full redundant setup. Um, you know, that's only 66 pounds. You're still about half the weight versus the old school lead acids system. So lots and lots of benefits when it comes to weight and density, energy density when it comes to a 36 volt battery. Now that said, I've done a video on comparing the three battery setup versus a single battery setup. I'll link it up here if you're interested to kind of walk through that. But I run a 36 volt battery and that's honestly, this is the way a lot of the boats are starting to go here in the future. It's just a lot more efficient way to do it. Now the features of it, I've talked about, we've got the Bluetooth app, we've got low temperature charge protection. So if you do throw this on a charger when the battery is frozen, it will protect itself from lithium plating, which ultimately affects the long-term capacity of your battery. It's got overcurrent discharge protection, which we tested here, low voltage, high voltage temperature ranges. So it's got, there's literally nothing else you can put into one of these batteries from a feature standpoint. This one has everything on it. Let's go ahead and talk about the testing for a second. We did two load tests on it, and I'll tell you why we did two different ones. And then we did a capacity test, which we'll put it on the leaderboard here in just a minute. The first test we did was just a straight over current protection. I've got a 36 volt inverter, and we put two heaters on it, cranked it up to 70 amps at 36 volts, which is, which is a lot, and the battery kicked out. That's what it's supposed to do. It came back online in about 30 seconds, and that's the important part. So if you do short something, I don't know, you're fiddling around in the back of your boat, cross a wrench, whatever it is, the battery will come on board and self-recover, which is what you want, especially when you're on the water. You don't wanna to have to go find a charger, or another 36 volt something to, to wake it back up. The battery will self-recover, which is fantastic. Then the second test we did was a slight overcurrent test. So like I mentioned, it is rated, it says right here on the top, 50 amps from a continuous discharge standpoint. Now, if you were to run, maybe you got poor wiring, maybe you've got an older trolling motor and it's gonna pull over 50 amps at 36 volts. Let's just say at full tilt, you're running 56 amps out of that battery. On paper, this battery should shut down. Now, what's nice about it is it gives you a little bit of flex room. And so what we did is we ran the capacity on it we ran the load on it at like 55. I had to adjust it because of the, uh, the heaters themselves. Anywhere from 55 to 63 amps for about four minutes. And that's just kind of a, a test. I came up with four minutes on my own. And what that's doing, let's just say you want to run across the cove, you know, four minutes at three or four miles an hour is actually a pretty good amount of distance. And I wanted to simulate that full load on a trolling motor that's pulling over 50 amps, see what it would do. And at four minutes, it did not cut out. 
and it did not, and so it handled the slight overcurrent. That's about 1.2C, plus or minus a little bit, of a overcurrent test, and honestly, that's what you want. Give you a little more headroom. You know, you're at 50, maybe your trolling motor runs 53, 55, 56 amps at full tilt. You have a little bit of headroom, at least according to my testing, with that. Now, the other test we did was a just a traditional capacity test. Fully charged the battery, run a continuous discharge on it, and it pulled 2,058.7 watt hours. It's rated to 1920, so over the rated capacity. And that ended up being, I've got it up here, 107.2, hopefully you can see that, 107.2% of the rated capacity. And let's go ahead and put that on our leaderboard over here, the capacity callout board, as we're calling it. Alrighty, so this is the capacity callout board. And what this is showing is all the batteries we've tested. We're coming up to about 30 tests. And that's going to show you the percentage of the rated capacity that we tested. So if it's a 50 amp hour battery and you got exactly 50 amp hour, hours out of it, that's 100%. This one's 107.2. So that's actually going to put us... Ooh, i got to move a lot of these. Let's move these down. Hold on. 107.1, 107.2. So that's actually squeaking in there right between a lead time extra mini, which is 107.4 and a lead time group 31, 36 volt at a 107.1. So right there in the middle, it's, you kind of see that's, that's pretty good, right? So this is trying to give you a feel for where things are at. All of these batteries are getting more than you paid for. There's not one that's below a hundred percent. So, uh, Right here is where the Power Queen battery ended up. Now we do have another Power Queen video coming up. This is the 12.8 volt, 125 amp hour Group 27 battery. This is a brand new one, which I'm pretty excited about because it's gonna fit a lot of different boats. Mm -hmm.